Are you feeling all right, George? Huh? Fine. You look a little warm. It's a chicken. <laughs> you're a terrible liar, George. Look at you. You're a wreck. You're sweating bullets. It's the Kung Pao. Mm. George likes his chicken spicy. <laughs> Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Binging with Babish, where this week we're taking a look at the Kung Pao Chicken from Seinfeld. A dish that, as you can see, contains myriad spicy and flavorful ingredients, so it should be pretty good. We're starting off by combining one tablespoon Shaoxing vinegar, two tablespoons black vinegar, one and a half tablespoons of soy sauce, one teaspoon chicken bouillon powder, and one tablespoon chili bean paste in a small bowl. In a separate and even smaller bowl, we're combining one and a half tablespoons granulated sugar, two teaspoons cornstarch, and a half teaspoon of kosher salt, whisking that into the liquids to make Kung Pao sauce. Now this is the point where we're gonna start to screw up. We're gonna break down two chicken breasts into way too large one inch chunks, which we're gonna briefly marinate in one egg white mixed with one tablespoon of water. As we add the chicken and massage thoroughly with gloved hands, we wanna form a sort of thick pasty goo on the outside of the chicken. Once things are sufficiently gooey, we're going to add two tablespoons of dark soy sauce, two teaspoons each sesame oil and cornstarch, along with a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt, come on, get out of there, and a quarter teaspoon of ground white pepper. Massage this together until it's even gooier still, then let it sit around at room temperature to marinate for about 20 minutes. Next up, we're de-seeding our Tianjin peppers. Oh, what the hell? The operation and safety of this battery cannot be guaranteed. Yeah, continue use. Think I care about battery safety? Nerd. I do, however, care about ocular and penile safety, so I'm wearing gloves. Because whether you use Tianjin, chili sabones, or chili de arbol, these guys are spicy. Next up, we're incorrectly slicing far too few scallions far too thinly, and finally chopping four cloves of garlic and a one-inch segment of fresh ginger. Now, the mistakes you're gonna have made so far have been minor enough, but they're about to get a whole lot worse because we're headed over to the stovetop where we're heating half a cup of oil over high heat in a large wok, swirling it around until it smokes, which is gonna help season our pan once we've poured off the oil. Now we're gonna start by frying too few peanuts in too little oil, about a third cup of peanuts into a half cup of oil. We're also gonna take care to overcook them because they brown quite quickly and continue browning once they're out of the oil. So once they're just a little bit too dark, we're gonna strain the now acrid oil from the peanuts. Make sure you shake off every last drop and add it back to the pan. Then in this too little oil, we're gonna toast, you guessed it, not enough Sichuan peppercorns, about a quarter cup. We're toasting those for one to three minutes until they slightly darken and are fragrant and once again straining out the oil, which by now has not only reduced by more than half, but is thoroughly bitter. We're adding that back to the pan and frying the chicken in it. Now there should be more like two cups of oil in this pan right now, so you're gonna end up with a kind of pasty, pallid pile of poultry that we're gonna dump our chopped chilies on, letting those toast up with the chicken as we frantically hope that our dish's appearance will improve. Next up, we're adding our too few scallions and our ginger too early. Sauteing for about two minutes to try to darken up the chicken before adding the garlic. Sauteing for an additional 30 seconds and then mercifully we're gonna add the Kung Pao sauce, which because we wimped out about the heat and fried our chicken in too cold and too little oil, is gonna have this kind of eggy coagulant in it. Now we're adding our lightly burned peanuts back to the pan, mixing everybody together and serving up our gooey, eggy Kung Pao chicken stew. Now at first you're gonna lie to yourself and say, maybe it's not so bad and then you're gonna remember that you host a cooking show and you can't put out stupid bad information. Information. So you're gonna watch a video or two and start over. This time using more peanuts, more scallions, and more Sichuan peppercorns. After once again pre-seasoning our pan, we're going to start with the correct amount of oil. Between one and a half to two cups, heated to almost smoking, in which we're gonna fry our peanuts for about one to two minutes. Then for some reason, we're gonna try fishing them out using a spider, which causes them to once again burn. After picking out the really dark peanuts, we're gonna soldier on, adding our marinated, still too large chicken to the now correct amount of oil, frying for about one minute until pale but not pale. This time fishing out with our spider and setting aside. Then we're frying our insufficient third of a cup of Sichuan peppercorns for one to two minutes, ditching our spider idea and going back to the old reliable dump and strain. Then we're gonna add a little bit too much oil back to the pot, about three quarters of a cup, our not enough scallions, our not nearly enough chilies, and fry those guys together for about one minute or until soft. Then we're adding the garlic and ginger, sauteing for 30 seconds, adding the chicken back to the pan. And remember there's too much oil, the heat's way too low, and we're gonna add our Kung Pao sauce too late. So instead of Kung Pao stew, we're gonna end up with Kung Pao soup. We're gonna try to dress that up by putting it over some white rice. You're gonna wanna tell yourself that people won't notice the super burnt peanuts and thin sauce poured over pale chicken because it's the night before the episode comes out and let's face facts, you're tired and a little desperate. But then you're gonna remind yourself that you procrastinated your way through high school because you said that you worked well under pressure. On some level, you're gonna know that you're lying to yourself because you're trying to compensate for your poor work habits. But as usual, you're gonna push down the bad thoughts and soldier forward, cutting your chicken into smaller pieces, chopping up more chilies and bigger chunks of scallion, and better preparing your ingredients so you can dump and go. And this time in the immortal final words of Larry David, 
I have a system. I've got a fine mesh strainer set in a wide, deep saucepan right next to the wok so I can more easily strain everything as it's being cooked, more easily return the oil back to the pan, and more easily keep things super hot because that was something I was kind of a wimp about the first time. Almost every stage of cooking in this recipe should be no longer than 30 seconds, and the entire thing should come together in about two minutes. So I'm adding the chicken to our two cups of oil and frying for about 30 seconds before straining into my awaiting pot and returning about a half a cup of the oil back to the pan. Into this oil I am adding my scallions and chilies, sauteing with confidence over maximum heat for about 30 seconds. There's gonna be smoke, it's gonna be scary, but just soldier forward. Don't be afraid to add a splash more oil and remember that every element that you add to the pan cools it down. So next we're gonna add our garlic and ginger and saute for no more than 30 seconds, add our chicken and then immediately add our kung pao sauce. Last but not least, add the peanuts, everything still blasting over super high heat, and cook for about 30 seconds, darkening with more soy sauce and or bean paste if you want a darker color. And there you have it folks, third time's the charm, the best Kung Pao chicken I've ever had. The chicken's juicy, the vegetables are tender crisp, the peanuts are crunchy, and it is super flavorful and spicy. So although George might be my favorite character on Seinfeld, I think the lesson here is don't be like George. Mistakes don't have to be losses, they can be learning opportunities. Then again, I don't know what you learn from accidentally killing your fiance with poison envelopes. Thank you.